Thank you. I just learned 10 minutes ago that I violated uh, a guideline of TEDx of not showing more than eight slides. I'm sorry to say that I have 80 slides, but the good thing is my talk is about how the world is changing every day and that we as individuals should challenge the status quo every day. So that's a very good fit. So excuse me for violating the TEDx guidelines, but it's for a good reason. This is me at the age of three months. I grew up in a small town in the south of Germany in a beautiful region called Bavaria. And I had a beautiful childhood. I uh, went to a good high school. My parents did everything so that I could have an exciting life. And the world today, from the world in my childhood, is so fundamentally different that I just thought, I want to speak about it. I want to speak about how different that world is today and what we can all do to be successful in this world and what we can do to help others to be successful as well. My parents listened to music like this. We do it like that. They rewinded music like this. We do it with the tip of our fingers. They wrote letters to their friends to share private messages. Yes, letters. Can you believe it? We write on Facebook. And please, don't dare to talk to me, because talking to each other is so 1900. Just send me a tweet. They called their friends with a telephone. We do it on Skype, and maybe in 2014, you're going to see a lot of people walking around with this thing on their hats. My parents met like that. At least that's what my father told me. <laughs> people today meet like this. 18% of married couples in the US met online. My parents went to a school that looked pretty much like this, and yes, schools still look pretty much the same way today, which I don't think is that good, but a lot of the information that we get today, we get it from YouTube. Everybody can get his information out there, and everybody can get it there. My father had one career. He was and he is a doctor in South Germany. Many people of this generation have 10 or more careers. Me, myself, after high school, I was a receptionist in a hostel in Paris in my gap year before university. I went on to become an online consultant. I worked as a journalist for some time. I worked with Microsoft. I'm now working with Ashoka, a global platform of social entrepreneurs. It's very different. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that just as much as I went from this to that, sorry, I know, quite shocking. <laughs> well, it means that the world is changing. Wow, the world is changing, what a great message. Well, yeah, it has always been, and I wouldn't be here if I only wanted to talk about how the world is changing, because it's always changing every day. But let me share with you this. I'm 29 years old. In 1950, the population of the planet was 2.5 billion. In 1984, it was 4.7 billion, 34 years later. In 2000, it was 6.1, and in 2100, it's expected to be at 9.1. 50% of the world population for the first time in history live in cities, and 2 billion more new urban residents are expected to swamp our already overcrowded cities. Çok kalabalık, as you would say in Turkish. Look at Istanbul from space, 1975, 1990, 2010. That's not even 50 years. It's pretty crazy. Look at how technology is spreading around the world. The telephone. It took the telephone more than 100 years to reach 80 or 90 percent of the world's population. The cell phone did the same thing in 15 years. And the internet almost did the same thing, reaching 50 or 60 percent of the world's population in less than 10. Now, what does that mean? Yes, the world is changing, but even more exciting and more crazy and with more implications of how we live today, the world is changing faster than ever before. The rate of change is accelerating. Some would even argue it's exponential. We live in a world defined by change. The world is changing, it's changing faster than ever, and while that brings a lot of opportunities and chances, it also brings a lot of problems. 
climate change that we don't really know how to deal with. Where is the future of energy? We don't know. Old industries are dying down if they don't innovate. The car industry and so many others. Look at the example of Detroit, for example, General Motors and so many others. Our economic systems are in crisis. We have a whole generation of jobless youth. While old powers are going down, others are taking off. We still didn't figure out how to feed ourselves. While part of the world's population is becoming obese, there's still people starving from hunger. How weird is that? Well, you might say, this are, th those are global problems. Am I affected by them? What can I do about them? While I would strongly disagree with that opinion, I also wanted to share with you that there's a lot of local problems. Each one of us is a brother, a son, a father, a mother, a daughter, a sister. The inequality between men and women, that's an everyday issue. The food that we eat, what does it do to our bodies? Where does it come from? How does the production of that food influence the world? How do we treat animals and the nature around us? How are children growing up in this world? Are we overburdening them, maybe? And the real question really only is, what's next? Because those were just a few examples. So, we live in a world defined by change, and the rate of change is accelerating. And you could study the stats and the facts for a lifetime and discuss with hundreds of people. But I want to make a bold statement here today. I want to say that the skills required for individuals, businesses, and organizations around the world to both be successful individually, I'm not talking about solving challenges and problems, just you navigating through this world, as well as for society as a whole to solve the challenges and problems that we face are very different. Look at this, 5,000 years ago, the majority in this room would have been a farmer. You grew up in a family of farmers and you gave birth to children who became farmers. Life was harsh and difficult, but it was also very simple in its design. You were a farmer. There were some kings that took your money or slaughtered you in wars, but it was still pretty much simple by its design. With the beginning of the industrial age, we entered a world that was defined by repetition and controlled by a small elite. We were, and we still are, being told every day what to do. Follow the rules, this is your task, this is your to-dos, do this, it's gonna be more efficient if you do it that way. That world was defined by repetition. And the education system that our young people go through tells them the knowledge and the rules that they need to be successful in a world defined by repetition. If you know this and that, if you know this and that, you're gonna be good at this and that. Well, what about a world that looks like this? What about the rules and the knowledge that young people and every one of us should know to be successful in this kind of world? What if, and I want to ask you that question today and the viewers that might watch this video online, what if, what if, we were farmers 5,000 years ago, we became small wheels in organizations defined by repetition. What if we should all be change makers? Change makers in a world defined by change. And when I say that, I don't mean him. And I don't mean him, I don't mean him, I don't mean him, and I don't mean her. I mean the person of the year, you. Everyone, seven billion yous, everyone a change maker. My second question, how can we all build it together? If we just, and I don't know if you all agree with me, but let's, let's make this experiment. If we all accept for a few more minutes that we should be change makers to be successful in a world of change, how can we build it together? How can we make sure that each one of us can be a change maker and will be? I want to share with you two stories, and I could share with you 200 or 2 million, but two stories of how people around the world are already being the architects of an everyone a change maker world, what they already do. And my first story is about children. Meet Roots of Empathy, an organization founded by a social entrepreneur from Canada called Mary Gordon, and it is her strong belief 
that one of the most essential skills of children in this world is the skill of empathy. In a world of change, you need empathy to be able to relate to people around you and to relate to the world around you. And what she does is she brings babies into the classroom. And it is scientifically proven that through the interaction with that baby, and babies can't speak, as you all might know, through the interaction with that baby, children develop a sense of empathy that is one of the guiding forces in their later lives. Empathy. My second story about youth, young people. And again, I could share with you many more examples, but I picked only a few. Meet Euphoria, an organization from Switzerland founded by 24-year-old Geronimo, and they're already today building an everyone a change maker world. What they do is they bring together hundreds of young people to workshops and events, and they let them define problems in their local communities and then help them come up with ideas and implement these ideas themselves without the interference of parents or teachers or adults. They themselves define problems and come up with the solutions. They call it weapons of mass construction. Look at this quote. Those might have been the four days when I learned the most in my entire life, a participant of an Euphoria event. And yes, I agree, because if you empower young people to be responsible for something on their own and implement things on their own, you give them the power to create stuff, they learn amazing things, to work together in teams, to lead others and lead causes, the skill of change making, of seeing a problem and solving it. And most importantly of all, they learn that they can be a contributor, that they can change the world around them, that they're not passive objects, that they're active individuals. You might say, young people, what can they do about the world? I mean, I hear that every day. It's crazy. Wow, they're too young. They don't know. Well, the founder of the theory of relativity, Albert Einstein, was 26 when he did. Mark Zuckerberg was 20 when he founded Facebook. And just because this talk happens in Istanbul, the person who conquered Constantinople and turned it into the city, Istanbul, Sultan Mehmed II in 1453, he was 21. Okay, you might say, those are global examples, emperors and geniuses. Well, meet Kartik, 22 years old, from India. He experienced an incident in his close circle of friends where someone who needed a blood transfer couldn't find anyone with the same blood type. And what he did is, he established socialblood.org, a platform where everybody can register and through Facebook and social media can find people with similar blood types. Amazing. Meet Felix. At the age of nine, he was giving a presentation in his classroom, and he drew the vision, what if every country around the world would plant one million trees? We could do something very effective to counterbalance the negative effects of climate change. They're at 14 million trees right now, and counting, and he, at the age of nine, kicked off a global movement called Plant for the Planet. Well, children and youth, that's nice, but what about us? How can we make sure that the businesses, organizations, political institutions, universities, no matter where we work and where we're, we're spending a considerable amount of our time, how can we make sure that we're the change that we want to see in our organizations? And there is already companies doing that kind of stuff. I could, again, give hundreds of examples, but think of companies such as Google that give people the freedom to innovate and create. We are entering a world that is fundamentally different from the world only five years ago, and we do that every day. So how can we make sure, as companies, businesses, civil society organizations and universities, to be successful in that world? The other day, I heard a speech by Apple founder Steve Jobs on the internet, on YouTube, as you can imagine. And he was saying something that struck me as a very simple yet very powerful truth. He was saying, everything you see around you that you call life was created by people that were no smarter than you. And th that's beautiful. 
because the stage I'm standing on, the carpet behind me, the camera he's using to take a picture of me, the microphone I'm speaking in, the buildings we live in, the food that we eat, the education systems that we build, it's all made by people that were no different from you. So it all starts with us and we can change it. We live in a world defined by accelerating change. What if, what if, think of it for a few seconds, what if we could build a world of change makers finding a million plus one solutions? What if we could raise a generation that has the courage and the skills to benefit from that change, to turn it into something positive, to both be successful individually as well as collectively as society? To wrap up my talk, I want to do with you one small experiment that we do at Ashoka Youth Venture. It's the youth organization of the organization that I work for. And we help young people define problems and come up with ideas and help them implement these ideas. And we ask them two questions, and I want to ask everyone here to ask themselves. Think of a problem or a challenge that you're affected by or that you see in the world. It can be your neighborhood, your company, your school, your society, your country, the world. It doesn't matter, anything. Think of a problem that you care about. And then the second question, think of a passion, a passion or a talent that you have. And again, it doesn't matter. Art, music, dance, drawing, you're very good with people, you're very good in science, biology, biology. it doesn't matter. Anything that you are really good about, maybe taking pictures, that's the guy over here. Anything that you're really good about. If you find a way how to connect that challenge and that problem with your passion and your talent, that's probably the most powerful first step that you can take to become a change maker in a world defined by change. Because it's not always about you, but it might start with you. Thank you. <laughs>